Hi, I'm Liz Tassone. I'm volunteer host of Caring Matters Podcast. And I'm here today with Linda Marshall. And Linda is um, the owner and president of Health with Heart. She's a licensed social worker, certified social work case manager working with older adults. And uh, as Linda knows, having uh, many years experience working with families uh, and uh, older adults, that one of the most difficult things that a caregiver faces as their loved one ages, and especially if there's dementia involved, that uh, the part about wondering if this person is still capable of driving, bringing up that conversation, and also sometimes the need to actually take away the car keys. So Linda and I are going to talk about today uh, this kind of very touchy issue for, and a uh, very important issue for a lot of caregivers. So first of all, Linda, how do we know if it's time uh, and how do you find out that your loved one should not be driving? Well, I think one of the most important things is knowing the warning signs. They are helpful, they're really helpful to both the, your loved one and your the family members. Um, you know, for instance, if there are health issues, um, are they on certain med medications that can, you know, with a combination effect of, um, you know, the medications and, you know, driving, are they going to be focused? Are they, you know, are their senses as accurate as they should be? Um, are, do they have eye problems? You know, because eye problems can interfere with focus and sensitivity to light. I mean, all of those things have to be taken into consideration when you're driving. Um, cataracts, glaucoma. Uh, are they having hearing problems? Can they hear a horn? You know, will they be able to hear the siren when it's coming? Um, problems with memory and forgetfulness. Um, have your has your loved one been complaining of night driving? You know, are they getting angry when they come home? Are they mad because you know this person pulled over in their lane rather than you know um, driving the way that they should? Those are all signs that they're having issues with driving. Mm, okay. So they're more to blame other people for their you know their um, you know. Um, problems with not being able to really focus on what they're doing. And uh, one of the things that I would like to say is there is a book um, by an author, uh, Elizabeth Dragone, who is, uh, she wrote the, writes the book, uh, The Driving Dilemma, and it's, she says that 90% of driving safely relates to the ability to see clearly, wow. which I think is really great. Um, and I just wanted to throw that in yeah, there. But, yeah, and um, we'll put that uh, that author's name and uh, book number on the on this podcast above or below it, so that you can have that as a reference. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. And then there's medication issues, you know, because they can call, cause uh, blurred vision, confusion. Um, you know, are they drinking alcohol and mixing medication? I mean, everybody enjoys having a drink in the evening, and, you know, if they're going out and driving after that, when they're also taking medication could be a real issue. Mm -hmm. So recommendations would be, um, you know, to make sure that they've had a current eye exam, to have hearing evaluation done, to check with the doctor about the medications that they're on, and have an in-car driving evaluation. I, I know it's difficult for seniors and our, you know, our, our loved ones to consider um, having to go through all of these steps, but when you explain to them it's not just themselves that could be hurt, that they could be hurting someone else, they're more understanding of mm -hmm. you know, why families want to have that done. Um, there are places out there like Cedar Village, Tri Health, and Mercy Health Partners all provide in car driving evaluations. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and there are two websites also that you can go to. One is the American um, um, Occupational Therapy Association, and the other is driving, uh, the Association for Driving Rehabilitation Specialists. And if you go on there, you can actually put in your address, and they will find somebody in your area. That's willing to get behind the wheel and evaluate their mm -hmm. their driving skills. Mm -hmm. Wonder how many of us would actually pass that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know I'm not so sure myself. <laughs> okay. Um, as far as approaching your uh, 
parent or loved one about this topic. Do you have any suggestions on how you actually bring this topic up? I do. I, I but you know, I think for me, one of the um, things that I really um, want you to understand is that for most of the clients, it's the most difficult discussion that anyone can ever have. It's even harder than moving from a mm -hmm. home that they've lived in all their life. Um, it's important to understand that to them it's a symbol of freedom and mm -hmm. independence right. and we don't realize um, you know, how, how devastating it is to somebody when all of a sudden they can't go out and do all the things that they were used to doing. Um, be respectful when discussing driving concerns. Give examples of why you're concerned. You know, maybe you've driven with them recently, mm -hmm. or maybe you've followed them going to the store and you could see that they were swaying, things like that. Talk to your loved one with other family members or with a doctor. You have to be united when you talk to them. You all have to be on the same page, you know, because they will, uh, you know, I, I mean, I could just think of myself. I would say okay to one daughter, but you know, I'd be adamant to the to my other daughter about I, you know I can still drive, but if you're all uniformed in your way of thinking and approaching, I think it comes across so much easier. If that's not working, you know, you need to really be specific with your doctor that you're really you know you're really concerned about driving, and if you have to, you can call the motor vehicles in your area, the Department of Motor Vehicles, and. Um, as an anonymous person and tell them that you have a concern and they will um, look into it and actually can take the light driver's license away. That if they have reason to think that mm -hmm. this person mm -hmm. isn't driving safely. But the, probably the, the, um, the, the most important thing that I can say is also to contact your uh, police department in your area. They have been so supportive of my work as a care, uh, care manager working with older adults in the community and I call them and let them know that you know I have a concern or a family has a concern over their loved one and they will um, try to accommodate by watching their driving. They'll be, you know, they'll be um, out there looking to see if there's any concerns and actually pull them over. And because they are concerned about keeping the roads safe as well and exactly. they want to know about this. Exactly. Um, one of the persons, I'm Leela Knox Shanks who wrote a book on caregiving, one of her ideas, and I think family members get very creative when it comes to taking the keys away and her husband had um, Alzheimer's disease and did not want to give up those car keys and so one of the things she did was she put keys that didn't work. They looked exactly the same as his keys, but keys that didn't work in the car. And so he would take his keys and he would sit in the driver's seat and try to turn the car on and they wouldn't work and she'd go, I don't understand, let, here let's switch and let me try my keys. Mm -hmm. And then she'd move over to the driver's seat and he would scoot over to the passenger seat and they would you know, and then her keys would work and they would take off. So I think there's a lot of family members that get very creative, especially when it comes to an Alzheimer's patient. Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to have this discussion with a parent that is, you know, fully cognizant. Exactly. But when dementia is involved, then sometimes, you know, it's a little uh, more sticky even to have the discussion. Well, I've noticed families use the, um, well, Johnny needs to borrow the car, or it needs to be serviced, you know, things like that, that, you know, work for a little while, and then sometimes they have to move on to something that's a little bit more uh, difficult to, to um, explain, like sitting down with the family, talk, going to the doctor, things like that. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, or to deaden a battery, or take the battery out, or whatever, to, so that if they continue to drive when they shouldn't be driving, and getting in that car, then the car won't work for them. So it's, at it's, some point, it's taking away the keys and taking away the car. Unfortunately, is yeah. you know the last resort a lot of times. Yeah, uh, it, it's a tough topic, and I'm glad to hear there's a book out about it because I think that'll help um, our caregivers a lot when they're dealing with this issue. I know that's a really tough issue for many, many people. 
uh, especially as their parents age or is because like you said it is taking away essentially their independence and freedom that car means so much here especially in America where we don't necessarily have the backup of, of public transportation mm -hmm. so this is a big deal and it needs to be dealt with in a sensitive manner so thank you for your expertise oh, on this yeah well, I want to thank Linda Marshall for her expertise on this driving and when to take the keys away with, um, with older adults. And um, I also want to thank our sponsors because they helped to bring this podcast uh, to life. So we want to thank them. Vitas Hospice, Hillebrand Home Health, Home Care by Blackstone, Family Bridges Home Care, Lifespan, and Bailey. So thank you. They're all listed there. You can click on any one of them and it will take you directly to their website. And we want to thank them for sponsoring this. I'm Liz Tassone and I want to thank you for listening and always remember that caring matters.